You start shaking when you get up, you feel sick. And sometimes you just be shaking there, laying, and can't get up. You gotta have it, because I gotta have it, and you gotta have this shit. You understand? Dustin looks at his ID picture taken 11 months ago. His heroin addiction has taken a toll. Since then, he has lost 10 kilos. His girlfriend is pregnant, and his mother-in-law often drives around town to find him and tell him to change his life. You got a baby on the way, you need to learn responsibility. Now, if you don't want the responsibility, Dustin, I'm not gonna put my daughter through this. It's drugs all around here, so I can just walk right there and get some. You understand? It's peer pressure. The United States was first hit by a heroin epidemic in the 60s. In Baltimore, heroin never left the streets. Ron is not an addict, but like many of his friends, he grew up around drugs. People shooting heroin, smoking crack. Did you grow up seeing that? Mm -hmm. So you think your life is like different from other kids your age? No, not really, because most of them see it too. Mo is 18. She prostitutes herself to get money to buy drugs, spending as much as $300 a day to feed her addiction. I lost everything. I'm losing everything. Slowly. It hurts. You feel like you're making people who love you worry. Yeah, they're going to worry. But I can say, if they, if they were so concerned, then why not come and help me? I've been sitting there for myself since I was 12. This is all I know. The feeling of abandonment is shared by many, and drug policy experts say that the whole issue of drugs has fallen off the political radar. The war in Iraq uh, and the economy are the dominant political issues in the country at this particular time. The fear factor that relates to violence associated with drugs has diminished significantly. It may no longer make national news, but the gun battles and drug-related violence has never stopped in this city. The murder rate here is seven times the national average. In the streets of Baltimore, it is common to come across what people call memorials. You can see them in lampposts and also sometimes in trees. These places symbolize where young people were murdered, mostly because of drugs. And people come here to pray for their memory. They say it's a recession. More than half of the black male population under 30 in Baltimore is either in prison or on parole. Hey, big homie. Cornell is a former drug dealer, but since he got out of jail three years ago, he spends his time in poor neighborhoods trying to help vulnerable teenagers. I stayed locked up 19 years, nine months, and I pray to God that no one else has to go that far before they really wake up to what's really going on in life. You know, we all make mistakes, and this is one of the reasons why they put erasers on pencils, because nobody's perfect. One generation helping the next. And I gotta make it right, you know, this. I got baby on the way out. In a city desperately in need of it. Shit, life's hard, man. Well, and joining us now, I have the pleasure to be with Donnie Andrews. Donnie, you were a major player of the gang, the street scene in Baltimore. You spent 18 years in prison, and yet you managed to turn your life around. Tell me first, why are young people finding it hard to get out of this cycle of violence and drugs right now? Well, mainly because they have um, they had this misconception of life, and they're dealing with things that I didn't deal with 20, 30 years ago. And they don't have that family environment to bring them, to bring, you know, some type of unity amongst them. So they, they have to roam the streets of the city to find out, you know, where they belong, you know, doing, due to peer pressure, you know. And um, I think the major problem is that, you know, they call this themselves, uh, like one would say, putting their eggs in, in, in the basket before they hatch. I think that, 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 that actually it's already hatched, the chickens already hatched, and they're climbing out the basket, running away with their hopes and dreams. Mr. Andrews, why were you 18 years in prison? Can you tell our viewers? Um, I, was, I did 18 years, you know, because uh, of uh, armed robbery and homicide. Now, you inspired one of the main characters of a world-famous series called The Wire. It was inspired on you, on your life. Do you think this series has portrayed to the world and the United States what life, crime, and life is like in the streets of Baltimore? Actually, it, it, it is. I mean, we try to hit 
home base as, as close as we could come, you know, without uh, creating any type of fictional a atmosphere. And uh, we actually uh, portrayed everything. I was I was consulting. I, I worked in the writer's office with uh, David Simon Ed Burns for a year. And, uh, you know, so with my life experience, when David was a reporter, he covered my uh, my arrest back in in eighty seven. So it does reflect it, all the way. All the way. Now, uh, Mr. Andrews, do you think any politician? Uh, we're not talking specifics here about McCain or Obama, but do you think anybody can actually do something and change the situation here in Baltimore? I think it's not one individual, no, because Congress don't work that way. But if Congress, if they stop debating about Republicans and Democrats and work together. You know, that's the only way they're going to change it, you know, without, you know, any type of jealousy. Like I was watching uh, one of the debates the other day when they was trying to uh, pass that economic bill, you know, and because somebody said something, the people got angry and voted against it, you know. So if they put their feelings aside and, and, and deal with the people issues, yeah, they can change it. Absolutely. And my last question is, you talk to young people all the time here. What... How do they see the future? What do they tell you? Well, they have to deal uh, major, it's, it's major issues on that part because right now all the programs are closing down. Kids don't have nothing to do after school. Okay, and Mr. Andrews, we're going to have to leave it there. We ran out of time, but thank you very much for joining us. And then uh, back to you in D.C.